And we're live. Hey. Yo. Right on. Just as something goes in my eye. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Great. How's it going, boys? Fine. Going all right. Quiet time. Just buckling down and working. How about you? Not bad. I saw my surgeon today, and he said, at this point, I'm pretty much... It's good to do whatever I want and continue healing. Nice. No more precautions. I still can't blow my nose for another week. Uh, but that's about it for right now. Cool. I do still have split vision, though, which is annoying. So I'm hoping that. Have they said when that's going to go itself. away? Or? Uh, he says it should just go away. And if it hasn't by the six week mark, then there will be concern and that we'll have to take further action, but he doesn't think we're going to get to that. So he's confident. Uh, it'll just go away. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's good. At least. Yeah. What's up with you, Paul? Nothing. Chilling. Okay. Yeah. Did you watch the, the born newest, people? Um, uh, what if I did? I liked it way better <coughs> than the first one. I thought it was very cool. It was very weird <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I liked it more, too. I don't know if I liked it like way better, um, but I do. I did like it more. I thought there was a lot of fun little like Easter egg jokes and references to the rest of the MCU. Like, oh, hey, do you remember that guy? Um, just some characters popping up with like different personalities that you wouldn't expect or they're on different sides of the good versus bad, which was pretty fun. I feel like it just pushed it a little more in a fun way. The first one kind of felt like almost a retelling with a different cap, basically, and very similar in a lot of ways. And this felt more like, yeah, I, I could see that. What yeah, the hell yeah. is I Thanos doing? Here? Yeah, Thanos, I didn't want to say because I thought that was a bit of a spoiler, but having well, him show up was pretty great. Yeah, we won't What's say also what great he's is doing. They have almost like the entire voice cast. Um, yeah. Which you Man. just you don't see very often when it comes to like spin off shows. That hurt though, because you know, Chadwick yeah. is gone. So that's yeah. yeah that was like hard. Nice little message for yep. sure. His last one. Yep. Um, Bummer. I also that say uh, Tukin Birdie season two ended this last week. Yeah. Um, that that was, that was a, a heavy season. season. <laughs> There's yeah, some I thought stuff. it was really good though. Speckle is the best character. Speckle Sean in the mo the few moments he got every time. It yeah. was so good. Have you seen all of season yeah. two? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, that thing where, with him and the hot dogs. Oh, God, that was so good. Yeah. I'm going to do right by you boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. There's, yeah. I love that he's, he's not like a main, main character, but he just pops up, says something ridiculous, and you're like, fuck, it's so fucking funny. God yeah. damn it. I mean, even in this last one, he's just like on the roof, and then there's these weird like wires from the from a hole in the ground, like trying to like steal something or something, and he just had to throw something at it to like stop. Like every part he's in is just a weird, absurd moment. That's great. Yeah, it's very, it's very good. Um, and I love that they announced there's a season three coming. Yeah, it's, like right in the middle. Fantastic, because season two barely happened, so. I'm Season two of Tukum Birdie, definitely in my, like, top <coughs> television of 2021, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, what else was new? I went and saw Free Guy. I had to know. I had okay. to know. All right. And? I, th I thought it was, I thought it was good. It's extremely okay. corny. Sure, yeah. Um, and it, and it gets pretty yeah. silly at some points, for sure. But... There's some quality jokes in there. There's some very good cameos. Um, okay. So there were a few times where I was like, this, that was just a great scene that like, I enjoyed my time with it. Um, it is, I, it is weird seeing like streamers in there, like ninjas in there. Oh, you know, yeah. as himself, uh -huh. you know, it's all about the, they're all playing a video game, right? Sure. So they're like commenting on it and yada, yada. I'm I'm like so over anytime there's like Fortnite dances in any kind oh, of media. Yeah. Do they floss in this? Of course they did. 
It, yeah, they do yeah. floss. Do the the one where your arms are going down and your legs are out to the side, whatever that one's called. Um, they do a bunch of them. I will say though, uh, when Channing Tatum does the Fortnite dances, it's actually a pretty great scene, and I bet he had so much fucking fun with that scene. And it is one of the better ones. Okay. It just, I, I think it's just a personality thing. If I'm seeing like a Fortnite dance and something, I'm I'm immediately just like, oh, can we just move on as a society? Like, can we, can we, can we please just move on from, from the Fortnite dances? But I guess it's, that's never going to happen because TikTok is about dancing, right? So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, it's, I'm probably just too old. Yeah. It's probably what it is. That's, so. that's definitely what it is. Yeah. 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 I mean, when I was a kid, no one was dancing. It's true. No, we had a single yet. person. We had yeah. <laughs> invented dancing. As yeah. soon as someone saw it, like dental floss, you're like, you know, I can make it. What happens if I move like dental floss? And then yeah. dancing was born. That's how yep. it works. That's how it happened, kids. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't <laughs> believe the textbooks. This is the real truth right here. Yeah, true. What's the next movie? What's the next big one for you? Um, there's a Hugh Jackman movie called like Reminisce or something like that. Is that this um, week or next week? That that's this week, and it's an HBO Max one. So I'll be, I'm not going to the theater for that. I'm gonna watch that. At oh, okay. Home, but that's the next kind of movie I, I had yeah. planned to watch. I'll check that out then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll check that one out. Um, in terms of like real big stuff that's coming, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of TV coming in September that I'm stoked for. Yeah, Shang Chi is the beginning of September. The next oh, yeah. Shang Chi. Yeah, that's true. Shang-Chi. That's right. Like, what do we do in the shadows? Season three is in September, and that show is extremely good. I think Sex Education comes back in it September as well. In a month, yeah. So, yeah, there's a few things in September. Like, there's a lot of TV happening for me in September. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited for that. So, sure. Um. Okay. Well, with that, let's do the top down perspective for August nineteenth. <laughs> I'm yeah. Sean Booker. I'm Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. It's hard because my split vision is actually like on the lower half of my vision right now. So stuff like the the clock is nonsense to me. Oh, um, okay. I see. Okay, it, that like makes it's, sense. It's, it's weirdly like getting better as it goes down, which probably makes sense because as my eye is raised, it is probably going down. Sure. That's that's how I'm thinking how it works. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, though. Sure. Um. All right. Oh, you played nothing? Uh, I started 12 minutes today. I'll say I like it. It's extremely story heavy to the point where it's hard to talk about without uh, giving anything away that you might want to find for yourself. Uh, it's janky in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but that's because it's a small team, I believe, that worked on it. Even though like they buggy have... janky? Well, it's like they... Re- they recorded a bunch of lines from Willem Dafoe, uh, James McAvoy, and Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley. And there are very obviously stilted moments of something happening where they are either talking over one another or like an animation is trying to play and they're talking. It's just weird video game jank that like is not from a AAA studio with a thousand people working on bugs that okay. fixed it. Uh, okay. It's... It is not bad. It has led to some hilarious moments. Um, not intended hilarity, right? Not intended hilarity. That game is dark in a way I was not expecting. It is kind of fucked up. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, it's it's like about like a home invasion or something, right? Y- yeah, yeah. There is a home invasion that happens, and you're just kind of. It's a Groundhog Day thing, which I also wasn't really yep. expecting. Uh, where I, like that was like pretty obvious premise. in the advertising. Yeah, yeah, that's like the no. Your character the knows is. he's in a Groundhog Day thing and like talks about it. That's the part I was like, oh, I'm not the play. I'm not as the player, the only one who knows this. My main character also knows about this, and it means that he's weirdly deadpan about some stuff that maybe you wouldn't be deadpan about because he knows that you know in groundhog day where bill murray just starts like i don't know like trying to kill himself or like fucking with people and stuff because he knows nothing matters and it's just like yeah whatever i'll just shoot myself who gives a shit there's like stuff like that about that you're going that's going on in there that is just like you should not be as like easy about this (laughs) 
as you are, but I guess you know that it's well, going to reset. Well, that's the thing. Like, they, they touched on that in uh, Palm Springs that came out last yeah. year with uh, Andy Samberg. Is the, the, one of the questions is, like, how long has, has this person actually been stuck in the time loop? And, and even they're like, I've, I've lost track. I don't know. And so there's, yeah. like, an implication that it's been, like, forever or something years and years and like eventually yeah like so you yeah. know that's kind of the question like it's a fun thought experiment how many days and i ask both of you this how many days would would have to pass of you being stuck in a groundhog day scenario before you like really start to like do some shit that like if there was actual consequences it would not be okay like three if i knew it was a groundhog day it would thing. take you three days so on day four it you would like Probably punch do some... someone directly in the face oh no i would like rob a bank or something i would totally yeah, yeah. well you know okay either way yeah what yeah. about you john it would depend entirely on what the loop is like if the loop is like a nice positive loop it'll take a long time if it's oh like a sure shitty loop like like paul said three days <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> what do you mean a shitty loop it's the it's a it's a normal day it's an average day like you like today oh, you're gonna go if through it's an today, average day, then probably a couple weeks See, I think it would take me at least a week before I really like, like you know, try killing myself or or yeah, robbing a bank or or doing something like really weird. See, when anyone ever talks like like Groundhog Day or like time loops like that, I always think of that episode of Stargate SG One, mm. the one where like uh for Jack Colonel Jack O'Neill he like he wakes up just in a me in a meeting normally and then goes about his mission day, but Teal is getting slammed in the face with by a door at the beginning of every time loop. So instead of like waking up in bed, he's literally getting like slammed to the face and then has to do everything over again. Yeah. Gotcha. So that would piss me off and make me do things a lot faster. I feel than uh, than if it was just like, okay, well woke up in bed. Let's, let's go about our day. Sure. The nice thing is yeah, that a lot like... of video games are roguelikes these days. So you could not worry about like having to play through something and then it restarting without a save. You're just always playing the same game anyway. Different runs. Good okay. shit. Yeah, sure. I guess if it's like a full one, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. But what if yeah. since it's a Groundhog Day effect, you're still getting the same uh, loops you would have gotten? Oh, anyway. yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you would probably, too. The seed would be the same. Well, then, then you would get smart and be like, I'm going to set custom seeds, and then it ain't going to do that. Oh, nice shit. Try. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, and well, and that you, you'd get faster at the game, right? If you knew the seed every time. Honestly, I don't think you would play that game very much. You would play it for maybe like a f like within the first couple of weeks, and then you'd be like, "I need to do something else." Cause... I need to rob a bank now. Yeah, like I need exactly. I need yeah. to like rob a bank. I need to do. I need to see how far around the world I can get in twenty four hours. I need to like, like really, like I need to like, start playing with the boundaries. Yeah. Just like smack my boss every day or something like yeah exactly yeah yeah i don't i don't think you would do it in three days i don't think because like i think first day is basically a wash right you don't even yeah. know what's gonna happen first yet. day you don't know second day it's like wait w like you're you're confused right maybe you maybe you start having some suspicions by the end of the day i think day three is when you like start to figure out what's going on i don't think that fourth day you're you're fucking with people no, I think you're doing something to see, though. You're testing it for sure. Starting yeah. that. Yeah. Probably I don't, think you're, I don't think you're pushing the boundaries, like, with consequences on day four. Yeah, I think that's perhaps still... not. Yeah. A little too early. I definitely think a week, maybe a little bit less than a week, once you know that ex escalation. Anyways, uh, 12 minutes is very good so far, even though it's a janky kind of messy game mechanically. It's fun. Uh, that's a game I would like to talk about at length at some point. So maybe that if we all play it or maybe a couple of us play it, we could do like a spoiler thing on it. I plan to play it. So yeah, we yeah. can do something. Uh, that's it. John... Well, other than uh, Pacross, still working through that. Reese and I started playing Axiom Verge 2 this week. Okay. On a Switch? On Switch, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm torn how I feel about that game. Okay. The explorations. You like the first one, right? I love the first one. I think the first one's a fantastic Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, the exploration's great. Uh, the the sense of trying to find everything is there a bunch of the new mechanics they added in are neat uh but i don't like the direction they took the combat in so far 
Uh, okay. So in the first game is all focused around you get a, a gun, essentially. The gun is for long. You can do long range, medium, close, depending on what type of gun you're using. But yeah, you have all these different methods of attacking with the gun. Uh, in this one, you are primarily close range. Very close range, in fact. Uh, and, but the enemies still feel like they're designed around Trace, who had uh, a, like a, a gun. So I feel like I've been taking a lot of unnecessary hits when I don't need to. Uh, I can't really space out enemies. Enemies feel like they have a lot more health than I expected. So they'll take a bunch of extra swings. You do eventually get a projectile, but it's a weaker projectile than your main physical attack. And it is slow by comparison. It's like a boomerang. Uh, so I haven't been too jazzed about that. We finally got a new weapon after doing like three different zones. And it seems pretty good. Uh, but one thing I found interesting so far is all the bosses we bumped into have been optional. There hasn't been an actual forced boss fight on us yet. Hmm. That's cool. It's been interesting to just play through and see so far, but uh, I need to spend more time with it. And but we're playing only playing it together, so like we only touch it like maybe every three days or something like that. Sure. Uh, I am excited to play more of it. And like I said, the actual exploration is really good. The mechanics they threw in there, they added a new hacking mechanic this time around where uh, holding down a button will like emit this aura around you and you can hack enemies. You can hack platforms to activate them, open doors. But like there's also a skill tree. So you have to put skill points into that if you wanted to open like heavier security doors or take down bigger enemies and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool little things in it that definitely are keeping me interested and making me want to see more. But uh, it is a completely different character. Uh, it's a completely different time. It's a completely different planet, as far as I can tell. So uh, I'm curious to see how this ties in, if anything. There's, like, hints here and there that there's, it's going to tie in, but I want to see for sure by going through it. I So far, it, I, I don't know if I can recommend it as strongly as the first one, but if you like exploring in Metroidvania, it's, it's got that in spades. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Kind of yeah. killed my excitement a little bit, but I'll still check it out at some point. It just moved down the list a little bit, I think. It, it might, like I said, <laughs> by the time I'm done it, it might, it might feel different. Sure. But the first impression it's giving now is not as strong as the first impression the first game gave me. The yeah. first game immediately hooked me, uh, and like I was super invested. <laughs> this one's been a bit more of a slow burn. Sure. Both how, in the way we've been playing it and in the, the actual progress of the game so far. How difficult would you say it is? Uh, so far, it feels harder than the first because, okay. yeah, like you're in a lot more combat situations that uh, you'll probably take damage from. Sure. Like the first weapon you get is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. you, you, you primarily pick it up because you need to destroy boxes that they're blocking the way. But uh, unless I just took a wrong turn and I missed a better weapon... I've just been like I was struggling with combat until the most recent weapon I got, and then now it's now it's at the point where I'd say like, oh yeah, no, this is right. This feels good now. Okay. Hmm. And combined with the hacking, it's been interesting too because you can just hack enemies to become your allies, so then you don't have to fight them anymore. Sure. That sounds cool. Yeah, the first game was all about kind of hacking stuff, right? In a way, yeah, it was like pixelization. Like you, you had a gun effect that basically like decompile the world around you to make and like things into platforms make enemies drop health stuff like that yeah. there like hidden walls you could walk through when you were into like a, a weird like 8-bit zone stuff like that uh yeah like i said the so far it's been interesting in the sense that like there's a couple small mechanic changes compared to the other one uh you get like a drone much earlier in this one than you did in the first one uh, it's a much more integral part of the game and the exploration. There's like a whole second map that you bump into pretty fast. Uh, but yeah, I need to I need to play more of it and get a proper feel for it because like the uh, the close range I wasn't expecting. But now that I've got a weapon after like fighting a hidden boss that feels better, uh, we'll see how I feel through the rest of it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Even fail Destiny in chat says I finished it this week. Mm -hmm. I'm also torn on how I feel about it. That is the general consensus I have been hearing. Uh, I think reviews have saying like they've said the exploration is probably better than Axiom Verge One. Uh, the pixel art's great. The music's great. Uh, story is the story as Axiom Verge One was. Sure. But uh, yeah, it's hard to describe Axiom Verge's story otherwise. But uh, the combat is really, I think, the piece everyone's kind of feeling weak on. 
Hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. It is still like one dude doing it, right? Yeah, it's still Thomas Happ. Yeah. I know this one got bumped around a lot for various reasons, I think including his son passing away, so oh, I believe geez. I believe that actually happened. Bummer. Action Universe 2 was kind of weird. I remember it getting like delayed a few months back and then it just popped yeah. up at that uh Nindy show like last week and just like stealth dropped. Yeah. All right, well that's it for you. That's it for me. I've been playing through a game called Maquette. This came to PlayStation Plus a few months back. I'm playing it on the, the PS5. I don't I don't know if it's on other PlayStations or not. Um, I don't even know if it's on Steam. It's probably on Steam. Anyway, uh, this is another Annapurna joint. It's uh, a puzzle game where you... Um, all the puzzles are... So if, if, you, if you don't know what a maquette is, it's like a, like a figurine or like a model. You kind of you'll enter this space where there's like a maquette of the space that you're in, and anything you interact with with in with the maquette will happen in your area. So you're you need to like figure out, okay, how do I get like on top of this building? And it's like, oh well, if I take this little model of these stairs and put them next to that building in in, in the like toy version of it, a l giant version of stairs will come falling down where you placed them, and then you can go up those stairs in the in the outside area. You can get into that building and whatnot, or get on top of the building. And they play with that in a bunch of fun, different ways. You get different crystals that open up different doors, and you gotta like start. You start going like through different areas, so that like you need to remember. Okay, I'm the big version of myself right now, but I need to make myself small. But the area needs to be big, because if you like exit the real world, you will be exiting the maquette that you are inside of. Like every world is within another maquette, like that. So they start to play with that in lots of different ways. It's actually kind of similar uh, in how they mess things up a lot with Antichamber, uh, which we'll be talking about next week. Mm -hmm. um, also reminded me of like Super Liminal, uh, uh, a game I've only seen trailers of, but from that, it, it seems kind of like that, you know, playing with space to do these fun puzzles. Um, at the same time, there's a, a, a like a medium dense narrative going on. There's a lot of uh, audio logs that'll just play or uh, text kind of floating in the environment of what looks to be the beginning to the end of a relationship. I'm assuming the game's going to have a happy end where they get back together, but I haven't finished it yet. I'm like 20 minutes from the end. And what's kind of noteworthy about that is it's voiced by the, the woman in the relationship is voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard. Hmm. Um, uh, the actress, uh, I think both the voice actors do a great job. The guy I looked up his IMDb. He doesn't really seem to have done a lot. He's done like a few episodes of TV, but he's not really known for anything. So Bryce D Dallas Howard is clearly the the star power here. Um, you know, you're just talking. You were just talking about Twelve Minutes, and they have you know William Defoe, Daisy Ridley, yada yada. Yeah. And it, and Aperna Interactive, they just you know they got those uh, those uh, phone numbers. They just get the actors yeah. into the games. They have those uh, which connections. Which is just kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but I think I think Howard does a great job. I think the guy uh, does a really good job. The guy has such a nice, soothing voice. Um, I wish he was in kind of more stuff because uh, I think he has a really great voice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the end. It's just a really nice looking game and the puzzles are pretty uh, interesting. Um, so that's Maquette. Again, it was on PlayStation Plus a few months back. So you know, if you're a subscriber, you have it. And it's like it's like three hours long. Cool. Um, I've also been playing Splitgate, uh, the game that everyone's playing. Uh, yeah, because it had its console launch like a week ago, I believe. Yes. Yeah, this game's actually yeah. been out for a while on PC, but people are talking about it now because of the console launch. Right, right. Um, and there was like queues to get into the console version on the first week. Um, I've been playing this week and I have it in to hit queues one. Actually, that's not true. I hit queue, a queue yesterday, but it was literally like 10 seconds long. So I've really not experienced any kind of queue waiting time. Cool. Uh, for those who don't know Splitgate, it is Halo with a portal gun. Yeah. Um, so on your bumpers, you have a like a, an orange and a blue portal that you can shoot out. Um, and it just like it's it seems like such a no brainer because it works so well. 
um th th this mixing of it and like it is so halo you got a floaty ass jump your dude looks like a space marine like, shoddy snipers is in there oddballs in there like almost all the guns are the exact same as halo it is just halo with a portal gun uh, but it's fun it's a good time um and it is it is both extremely satisfying to like put a portal like to the side of someone and be able to flank them without like changing your location. Yeah. It is also extremely annoying when you die out of nowhere and then on the kill cam you see, oh, someone put a portal right behind me and just shot through the portal. And I was just standing still because sure. I didn't know anyone was even on my side of the map. Um, sure. Yeah. So it definitely like it's a fun twist it it feels like refreshing because it's like you have to like play this first person shooter now it is with a whole other mindset of like at any point someone could just pop out of the wall and, and i'm and then the fight is on um and you have like a mini map so you can kind of see if someone's near you and if they're above you or below you but it's constantly just refreshing and the person will just disappear because yeah they just went through a portal and now they're nowhere near you um, so the mini map is uh, kind of betrays you a little bit in that sense too. It only helps if someone's like, n n like not using the portal near you. Um, it has a pretty good early start cause it just puts you against, against bots. Um, so you feel like an absolute powerhouse. Um, but then once they start putting people in there and they're, and the people are actually using portals, it's like a whole other game. And, and yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. I I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, I'm kind of looking and, and because it's been on PC for so long, um, it, it's pretty refreshing jumping into a game that's like not broken at all at the beginning and just has a ton of content already in there. Um, so uh, it, it's a it's a free to play game and it's got tons of the battle pass and all that other stuff. But if, uh, if you know, if, if Halo with a portal gun sounds interesting to you, you should definitely check out uh, Splitgate. Um, all right. Yeah, that's all I've been playing. So let's do right, a before very we... little... Oh, yep. yeah. Before we go to news, I have to step in and make a correction. Uh, I looked it up. I couldn't find anything about Thomas Hap's son passing away, but I do now remember why I thought it was something about his son. Uh, I think a year and a half, two years ago, uh, Thomas Hap had to file a lawsuit with the publisher of the physical version of Axiom Verge because they were keeping money away from their disabled son's fund. Oh, I do remember uh, something about a weird uh, yeah i th i think i got there. that mixed up with something happening to their son but uh yeah no i think their son is is alive i remember there were in some so. battle for that shit that's true yeah so i think i got the two mixed right. up unfortunately it's my a apologies good correction <laughs> yeah clearly the happiest of corrections yeah. yeah for sure it's a much better outcome um all right with that let's do some news um and we'll pivot from talking about that to talking about Quake. Okay. Quake Remastered was uh, announced uh, and dropped today. It's QuakeCon, right? QuakeCon's happening? Uh, yes, that's why they did it today, specifically. Okay. I, they remastered the first three, um, which I think means they just upscaled everything to 4K, right? Yeah, someone was showing me pictures of the Quake One upscale, and you could see borders around like the the health numbers. So uh, they it might have been a bit of a slapdash job. Okay, I'm assuming it's just like these games are so old, putting them in 4K is just going to be janky. Like that's just how things are going to go. I mean, yeah, but it's uh, one of those things you think they would have caught. Maybe, yep, for sure. Uh, it's all, they're also on Game Pass. Uh, if, uh, if people are interested in playing some uh. Some old Quake stuff. Um, I don't know. Anyone excited to play some remastered Quake? No, eh, man. I already I played through Quake One like last year, two years ago. I yeah, got Phil. I grew up okay. playing Quake Two and a little bit of One, so I don't need to play any more of it. You can't go back. Okay. Um, anything else happened at QuakeCon? This is the only thing I really saw. I don't know if you guys noticed anything. I haven't been paying attention, honestly. Honestly, I didn't even know QuakeCon was going on until this announcement happened. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, we got a Pokemon live stream um, that I, I'll at least say for me, uh, I'm pretty excited about some of the stuff that they were showing off. Um, Pokemon Unite coming to mobile on September 22nd. Um, 
and I have crossplay with the Switch version. That sounds great. Uh, sure. I think that game will be totally good on mobile. That's not, that's a that seems pretty good. It's fine on mobile. Yeah. Um, at Pokemon Cafe Remix or Cafe Mix is getting like remade or something. I don't know. They talked about the mobile games, which I'm not following, so I'm going to skip that. Sure. Uh, they gave a big update on uh Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's still coming in November. Still looking forward to that. You know, they showed off the underground. Bada bada. Let's talk about the exciting one though. They showed off some like a bunch of gameplay of Pokemon Legends Arceus. I think that's how they pronounce it. Arceus. Um I think this game looks so good. Uh and they gave us a release date of January. What's the day? Tell me the day article that I'm looking at. Twenty eighth. Which is sooner than I expected. Um yeah, they went, they dove into the area. They dove into how you can interact with Pokemon, how you can do battles, all the stuff like that. They showed off some new Pokemon, or so I guess some like ancient versions of the Pokemon. This I'm I am trying not to get my hopes up for this game because the Pokemon company likes to disappoint and do the least amount of work possible. Um, but I'm I'm uh I'm excited. It looks it looks very good, and I'm surprised there's not two versions of this like the normal Pokemon games. I think it's because specifically they have the Diamond and Pearl remake coming out this year, and then like two or three months later, Arceus is supposed to come out. Like if they're both working on both games, there's no way they could do a double of that as well. I think they're I think they're stretched pretty thin, and I think that's why they kind of don't get to do much other than the bare minimum. But the double can't be that much more work. It's like the same game, ninety eight percent of it. <laughs> the only difference is like oh there's like seven exclusive pokemon for this one so I just make sure you buy them both i don't know it is odd that these are coming out so close together i would have expected the pokemon legends to be like a next fall game um but yeah i don't know oh uh, i'm it, seeing it chat cool. says it's actually a different studio working on the remake so it actually is uh game freak working on the arceus one okay ILCA, I'm not familiar with them. I've not, I haven't heard of that either. Maybe it's just like an internal Nintendo division or something. I don't know. I know you guys are the biggest Pokemon fans. Does Legends get you interested at all for such a revamp they're doing here? No. Kinda. Okay. I'll wait and see. I'll wait for reviews. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna play this for sure. There's that's, no, I'm not gonna play this. That's kind of it. I I just like good games in general. So if people are like, "This is like the best Pokemon game since like whatever," I'll probably maybe check it out. Otherwise, if people are like, "Yeah, it's another Pokemon game," it's like, "Yeah, okay, that's fine." Then that's not. See, both me. those scenarios are great for me. Sure. Yeah. Okay, right. so the only other work ILCA has done is they made Pokemon Home. Okay, hmm. so they at least know what a Pokemon is. A good start. And even even then, I think they didn't do all the work. I think they did part of it. I can't find full confirmation. Um, Skyrim Anniversary Edition has been announced. Thank God. And it's coming uh, November 11th. Thank God that's coming out. Yeah. So, uh, to add it to the list of Skyrim versions, the joke keeps going. Honestly, I hope it never stops coming out at this point. Like the, it's it's looped back around God. and I'm just looking forward to the next release each I time now. Did you see that did you see that hard drive complain saying how many times we're gonna have to re-update this article? The article about like, oh, you wanna feel old Skyrim came out ten years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, like that, the one where they keep counting down how many times it came out. That's pretty good. Yeah. Man. I don't know. I still remember that one um bethesda e3 live stream where todd howard was like hey we'll stop porting it if you stop buying it and like yeah. that just that just makes sense like because people are still doing this um you can upgrade the special edition to the anniversary edition free next gen upgrade coming soon they are adding fishing to skyrim there you go awesome <laughs> oh yeah. I, I'm I mean, sure like, someone's going to buy it and get excited. Sure. Yeah, I mean, well, experiencing it. That's the thing is like, it'll be someone's first time playing Skyrim. So why, why not? What's the next like new platform that they could port it to? The play date? <laughs> There's no way. This has got two buttons. 
and a crank. Hey. They put Skyrim on Alexa devices. Yeah, but it's not the full experience. Okay, maybe it's not the full experience. Maybe it's Playdate version where right, the crank is... All right, fine. Is... All right, if we're looking at it from that angle, then sure, they could do it. It just they put could. fishing in there. That is leading the way. There's a crank right on that thing. They know it's what true. they're doing. That's a good point. They what know exactly actually, what they're doing. What if that's the only reason they <laughs> added fishing to Skyrim is because they're going to port it to Playdate? It's the only they're reason. Like, we needed to beta test this new feature, so we put it out on the PlayStation 5 first. <laughs> Worked out all the kinks so that it was properly ready for Season 2 of the Playdate games. That would... You, it'll be one of 20 games you can buy for the one-time price of $24. That would single-handedly get me back on Todd Howard's side for everything. <laughs> single Did you get a Playdate? No, but I would no. like I would respect him more if he actually used the PS5 to beta test a play date fishing game. Weirder things have happened in video games. It's true. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> it's true. All right, before All we right. jump to questions, I have nope. to issue another okay. correction. Uh, <laughs> ILCA, which stands for I Love Computer Art, has worked on uh -huh. games such as Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Yakuza Zero. Near Automata, Ace Combat 7, and Dragon Quest 11. Those are big names. That's all Those of them. Are actually, that's actually a lot of big names. That's why I felt I did have to correct that. Okay. Good for them. I don't know what they did on all those games, but they worked on them. Probably the art. I would have to assume it's They the do art. love computer art. It's right in their name. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. Thanks. You got to save all your corrections for like the end or something. We'll give you your own no, segment. No, absolutely not. <laughs> they have they uh, have to happen immediately. <laughs> they have to happen at a moment's notice. Otherwise, people will forget what we're even correcting. They'll go through the podcast and be like, "Oh, well, what I we guess need, I, I learned something." We need to set it up so that you have a button and, um, what's his name? Oh my God, Ace Attorney guy. I can't remember his name. Phoenix now. Wright. Yeah, Subject, Phoenix Wright yell comes up and is like correction or whatever when you hit. No, something. I got, instead I'm going to use like this button marked fail and just press it and it does like the <laughs> wah wah horn. I'll just do that. That sounded Incoming like every correction time in the in that speak not microphone. What if you just had a button that just shuts the sh show off? Just, I I have that wrong. button. That, I could push Paul it right has, now. That's called the disconnect the internet button. Yeah, we yeah. could do that right now. If you get something wrong. And it's proven John has to rip his Ethernet cord out of his computer. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, top down perspective at gmail.com is the email address to send questions in. You can also do it on Twitter at TDP Podcast, uh, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. Uh, this first one comes from Kevin. What is the best and worst use of real life time in video games? For example, Animal Crossing. Best and worst. I'm having a hard time thinking of something better than Animal Crossing. I really hate I... mobile games that are like, you have to wait an hour before you have energy to play our thing again. Oh, yeah, I hate that. Sure. That's, I, I think I that's the worst say. use. Worst. I was gonna yeah. say there's like I like it when games are like, yeah, like you it's been a couple like hours, like you went to bed between play sessions, so we've unlocked like an extra content for you, like you got access to a special ability. It's like sure. Bravely Default did something where like if your 3DS was in sleep mode, a timer went by and then like you got access to like a free default mode or like a free like super summon or something like that. Yeah, sure. the the Bravely Default 2 did the same thing where it just kind of goes on in the background. Um a lot of the Assassin's Creed games have had ones where you can like send assassins out on missions and it'll be like, all right, they'll complete this one in four hours. And then you yeah. can buy a speed up thing if you wanted to with real world money. Um, which is, yeah, which uh, canonically I have to assume is just like a shot of adrenaline right into the assassin's neck. <laughs> and now he can stab people faster or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Animal Crossing. No, I still, I still think that j the, j the fact that Animal Crossing has it with like seasonal events, I think that's just the best part. Sure. But, I mean, you can pace just... those out if you want. Like, take your time, like, and get to enjoy those when they come around. 
That's what I'm saying is that I think like Animal Crossing does it really well. And then because you can have like a Christmas and a Halloween in Animal Crossing around the same time or not around at the same time as real life. I think that makes it like the winner. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, MMOs have been doing that forever, too. Any like consistent sure, yeah. game. Sure. I guess most um, games as a service now have like yeah. a Halloween event and stuff. But I, I love that, though. Yeah, I do, too. It's great. Yeah, it keeps me going to their game. It works. Yeah, when they do just like a weird, spooky, goofy thing on for all of October, that's awesome. When mm-hmm. Apex brings back the like Christmas train mode, that's the best thing. I love that. <laughs> I love that shit. Give me more of that. Sure. All right, Cody writes in, what is your experience with friends who wanted to work in the video game industry? Personally... I've had many friends in high school and university say they wanted to make video games. Most gave up pretty quickly. One friend from high school got a master's degree in game design, but never landed a job in the industry. Instead, she works at a university now. Another friend who I no longer have contact with did take it seriously and released an indie game with the help of a friend. That game came out in 2015 and still says early access and nothing else has come from them. Sure. Well, I went to university to go for game design and realized like, yeah, I realized like halfway, more than halfway through my degree, I hated it. So uh, a lot of people, that's the story a lot of people say, actually. Yeah. I feel like I dodged a bullet considering like all the shit that goes on in the industry, how much people, they just kind of abuse people that just have passion for that stuff. Sure. Like, like my cousin worked at EA and everything, so like every kind of creative role can get abused pretty easily mm-hmm. oh yeah True. no 100 percent. john your degree is computer science right yeah okay so you, that's what you switched to all right yeah so i went i went into programming no i no it was computer science it was going to be with a concentration in game design and then by the end i'm like no it's not worth it sure okay this is the not, UFC this is not what i thought it was a game design course i don't know if they still do but at the time that i was going they did it was actually fairly well, new when i went there Honestly, I would expect them more so to do it now than than back then. Well, um, back then, uh, they were working with Radical Entertainment. They like people from Radical Entertainment ran the class, and that company no longer exists. So, I was about to say, I don't, I don't even know what Radical Entertainment is. Uh, prototype. <laughs> okay, interesting. And were they were Calgary based? No, they're based, uh, I think, in Burnaby. They were over in BC somewhere, Vancouver area. Okay, and but just, uh, they they would come over and teach the class. Uh, I think it was like a winter semester class. Uh, they'd have the students make a racing game. And that was pretty okay. much the uh, the main thing about it. You had to you had to do the pitch design, the pitch document, work together in a small team of like four or five people to make it. And I was absolutely miserable while doing it. I wonder if Bioware does anything over at the U of A. They do. Yeah, I'm pretty I sure. Would, they I do. would I would hope so. I would assume so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I had any friends doing game design. Then again, I wasn't in, I didn't do any kind of like programming or computer science classes. So I wasn't really in those circles. I was more in like art kid circles. Yeah. We too. did, did we did have like a programming class in, in that. And I know someone did like make a game for that class. I have no idea what happened to that kid after though. So I, I couldn't tell you if he went into game design. Um, but so I don't actually know anyone from school personally that went into game design. Yeah. Growing up, my friends and stuff were very much more into film and, uh, movie making and stuff like that than like, we all liked video games, obviously, but none of us really wanted to like, oh yeah, let's make our own game. It was more like, let's grab the camera and go like do some dumb videos and stuff. Right. Yeah. That was closer to mine. And, and. I just never had the interest. Like, I have no interest in coding. It's, it, yeah, it's never been much fun, it. the little I've done. like Yeah, fair enough. Coding is the majority of the work for that. Yep. And it sucks. As someone who has a degree that tells people he can do it. <laughs> sucks. In this area, though, it makes a lot of money. Holy smokes, you can make a lot of money in this area if you know how to code. Sure. All right, uh, Suker Suker writes in and says, if someone were to make a top-down perspective beat em up which of you would be the speedy type, who would be power, and who would be boring balanced? Also, what would a top-down perspective beat em up look like? I'm 
probably balanced, honestly. I th- I honestly thought John would be balanced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm boring and balanced, so there you go. Well, the, not the boring part necessarily, but balanced, yeah. I would want to call dibs on the speedy one, because that's usually the character I like playing I as. honestly like, thought yeah, you would be the speedy one in general. Yeah, okay. you're, works out. you're like the most fit out of the three of us, and most of the things you've done have been running or marathons, so yes. Yeah, so yeah I, I like running, yeah, and also, yeah, when I play beat-em-ups, I, like, I usually prefer like the weaker characters, but they can like dodge around a bunch. Uh, you know, playing like thief classes, similar, you know. Sure. Well, Paul, that makes you power type. Makes sense. I would prefer to like take 10 years in a video game to do one attack, but that attack, not one shot something. That's my preferable <laughs> style okay. anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right. What would a top down perspective beat em up look like? Probably pixel art because none of us want to code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I mean, the art coding for 3D models. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah. coding in in the art process. Uh, I don't. To be know. fair, though, like when I went and did a bunch of uh, like animation courses, I also just don't like 3D modeling. I, <laughs> I have not enjoy doing that. I either. have done a little bit of like basic 3D modeling. Same. I am not a fan, but I like it more than some other things. I it was say. probably one of my favorite university courses. Was like sure. animation and 3D modeling, but it it was short and there was only one sure yeah it, i took as many animation classes as i could because that's what i thought i wanted to go into but i was just like i'm i'm just kind of not feeling this at all and and luckily i got really into editing video sure um, but in terms of like my art i've always been way more into like drawing uh and, sure and, and kind of flat looking stuff i guess i don't know I'm trying uh, to say, what do, yeah. Would would it, it probably, would it be one of those beat em ups where every all the characters have the same art style, or does each one have their own distinct art style? That'd be kind of cool. You know, kind of like how Smash Bros has each we, character we has could, their own kind of art style. Yeah, we could do that simply because we're all into pretty varied types of games. True. Yeah, yeah. We could base it off of that. So like, I'm into more retro stuff, so I'd be like the 2D pixel art style pixel sprite. One. Yeah. Paul, you what are, what are you into? Just like text based adventures? So you just be oh, like, that would like actually be words. great. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a Windows cursor, and you just like every movement is just like little ASCII art. Oh, that would be great, actually. And I, yeah, I don't, mine would probably I, when it comes to the art and games, I really like hand drawn stuff. I want to look like Spirit Fairer. Mm, yeah. Or just like an old cartoon, like Garfield and Friends, you know. Yeah. Something real classy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it would probably be us uh, going around beating up other podcasts. Oh, that like, would other be really good. Would, uh, we, we would be, like, fighting for, like, the top podcast rank. So, like, uh, we, we have to take on But the, the whole ones. time we know we clearly suck, so it's kind of like that Battletoads reboot. Mm, it would actually yeah, be kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad way to look at it, yeah. Okay. Sure, but like the first half of the Battle of Toads reboot before it kind of gets bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bust into like Joe Rogan's podcasting studio to take him on. That would be like one of the final bosses. Is that or like Night Vale, right? Oh, Night Vale would be cool. Like a Halloween like themed level or something. Like something really yeah. dark. And then... And then there'd have to be something with like the McElroys because they have like I think eight thousand podcasts. <laughs> Just an ever changing stage. There's definitely like a D and D one. Yeah, because there's a thousand D and D podcasts critical now. Role. We would be facing critical. So role. I think each stage would be like a different genre. So there'd be like yeah. a D and D one. There'd be uh, like a murder mystery, like real life, like true crime. Yeah. One. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What's another like super satur? There'd be a video game. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. yeah. One. Um... I'm trying to. I think that that's all I can think of. Yeah. Do Do we have it so that each like our characters take on like a different costume theme depending on the stage? Like true crime, we're like film noir. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, that's fun. D- yeah. D and D, we're in D and D costumes. Stuff that'd like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like I'm thinking to kind of kind of reboot, like right where yeah. they, they take yeah. on the properties of the yeah. So you're like a wizard. That's one of the best reboot episodes. Is the yeah the fantasy one. Man, I would play the like shit that. out of our game. <laughs> Fuck. <Yeah. laughs> oh. 
There'd be some pretty uh, good like self-deprecating lines like, yeah, well, we have 66 patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, kind of funny games cast. <laughs> We have a Facebook page. <laughs> ah, it hasn't been updated in five years. <laughs> the rest of Suku Suku's uh, message. What exactly counts as a single video game? Of course, we have some that are quantifiable as a single entity. But what about games within games? If a game were originally or was originally standalone, but gets put inside another, is it still separate? What about a one to one remake? Do both entries count as their own games? Should total conversion mods count as new entries? Okay. Why don't we go through these one at a time? But yeah, I know. Games. Like, this oh, is all related to the same thing, which Bob is going through it. But yeah. Okay. Okay, it so what exactly counts game. as a single video game? Okay, Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're doing props today? Okay, yeah. Metroid Zero Mission. <laughs> yeah. Advance Zero Wars mission. 1. Uh, Polygonal Tifa Lockhart. Nice. Sorry, you get, you know, here's, here's what you really want, polygonal Barrett. I was going to, as a joke, hold up a credit card, and then I realized how fucking this stupid is, that this was. This is Among Us. <laughs> yeah, among, there, that's Among Us. A single uh, video game. Carnival Games Mini Golf for the Wii. Pathless <laughs> is loading up on my phone, and I think that's all of them. Yeah. That's all the video games. Uh, yeah, game Genie for Super Nintendo. It's kind not of a game. game. That's a That's an app. That's a game genie. An app. The genie of the games. Basically, just like an app. It's kind like of an is. and knuckles. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's pretty quantifiable. This is so Rax let's go to... from Disney Infinity. <laughs> I'm impressed you have game? that around. Is that a game? Disney Infinity, Disney Infinity is, yeah. No, not anymore. But it is multiple games, so I, I don't know if that fits in the single video game. Oh man. Oh, uh, what about games within games? I mean, like, do you mean like triple triad stuff like that, like mini games? Like, hmm. if they have to be, they have to be standalone to become a single video game. I feel. I feel yeah. Like I wouldn't, inc I wouldn't say any single Mario Party mini game is its own game. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say, hey, yeah. you guys want to come over and play some platform Fart peril? Heart button. That's probably <laughs> one of them, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That that sounds like Mario Party. Yeah. Um Yeah, so there has to be some way of playing it standalone outside of a game at some point. I feel that helps. Like collections so, are one thing. Yeah, cuz I'm trying to think there definitely are like like little games inside of games. Sure. Yeah, but just referring to like yeah, it's weird cuz it's like technically that is a game, but I would never say like, "Oh, do you want to go play some like Donkey Kong Animal Crossing for the GameCube version. If a game was originally standalone but gets put inside another, is it still separate? Yeah, as long as it had a standalone version at some point. Yeah, I think okay. that one's yeah. pretty easy. Sure. Uh, what about a one-to-one -one remake? Do both entries count as their own games? So one-to-one -one remake, is that a port? Since they're not actually changing anything. That's what I'm trying to figure I, out. Are they talking like a port or are they talking like Final Fantasy VII Remake, for example? Well, the one-to-one -one makes me think not much is changing. Yeah, so right. then, yeah, it's just another version so of that same game. It's a port. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a port. It's the same game. If, but if we're talking Seven Remake, then it's kind of its own beast. Like that yeah, kind of example. It. I mean, Seven Remake is always going to be its own beast, no matter what. <laughs> it's such a yeah. weird thing. Yeah. I just figured that's just like the most recent and most <laughs> obvious example. Sure. Should total conversion mods count as new entries? I don't know what this means. Yeah, of course they should. Uh, that means taking a game that couldn't be played before and essentially putting it either in a new engine or updating it so it can work on modern hardware. Like Shadow Warrior 1 got a total conversion somewhat recently. Or like they got, it got put in the public eye recently because of Shadow Warrior 3. Mm -hmm. how, how is that different from a port? Uh, sometimes they add new like abilities, like higher resolution. Uh, sometimes they add in extra content or quality of life options. But yeah, it is m otherwise a port. Okay. And I think it's if we're if the if the port is also a game, then yes, that's a game. I wouldn't separate game. 
Uh, yeah. And what if a game has a dual release with minor content changes? Oh, this shit drove so, me so, nuts. Like so how Pokemon, right? Mega Man Battle Network, which had, yeah, or Pokemon. Sure. Okay. I mean, each of those are distinct games, but yeah, you know, I, I do think you can put like the slash. When yeah. Talking about them. Mm hmm. It would have to depend on what those minor changes are. If they are like, there's four exclusive Pokemon in this one. And I don't think that's much of a difference. I, but yeah. I would lump them together. Yeah, usually, like with Pokemon, you usually say like, oh, red and blue or diamond <laughs> and pearl like that. Yeah, like I don't yeah. think anyone's going out there saying like diamond is a is a better game than pearl. I'm sure somebody like has said so, that sentence so before. similar. But yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when I was 10 and on the playground, you you know I was putting up fists for Diamond. Of course. Yeah. Uh, what if a compilation has unique content? Sega does that all the time with their content. They're, that The collection counts as a game. Totally. But the other games are still their own game. Yep. If, if they had a standalone version, right? Yeah. I feel like that's the important marker. Yeah. Like okay. someone earlier brought up Yakuza mini games. Like the the arcade games that are in Yakuza. Yeah, they have standalones. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay, how about this? Before the Orange Box came out, how many of those yep. games had been released before? Only Ooh, actually sorry, yeah. TF2 was already out. The, the uh, two of the the first two half lives, half, right? Half, first two half lives were out. I think episode two and portal were the only new things in Orange Box. Okay, so does that make n neither of those their own game since they're not standalone? Portal has since been released as standalone. Okay, but when but when it came out, <clears throat> would you have said Portal is not its own game? I would have said Portal is part. I would of have the said Orange it Box, is, so. but with the definition we're doing. It, it wouldn't with that i would say yeah portal portal is a great part of the orange box i would get i would get the orange box for portal so orange box would be its own thing at that point but with it getting a standalone release now yeah i, I guess say, i yeah. guess the 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 terminology is important here because you couldn't go out and say please go buy me a copy of portal you would have to yeah. go buy a copy of the orange box yeah it is just very it's just it it feels wrong to me to say but port that portal is not a video game well, it's not a standalone video game. Or sorry, a single video game, I guess. It's not a single video game. Argued. Yeah. Yeah. It, that it, it, like technically it works. It just seems it just sounds odd. Uh what if it was a full game made inside of another game like Dota 1? Oh yeah, cuz Dota came from Warcraft 3, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean a lot of games came from specific uh, specifically unreal and uh half-life hence you know unreal engine yeah wouldn't, wouldn't that just be a game so, mode then at that point until it became its own thing that yeah, that, yeah i think that's I, the I, distinction right yeah like the uh, the example i'm thinking of here is rainbow six uh extraction used to be a mode of rainbow six siege it is now becoming a single video game sure is that right paul yeah i think yeah. like antichamber was originally made in half-life and then it became its own thing so i think it has to like break out and become a thing before it's a single video game i think that makes sense i think it kind of follows the the terminology thing with portal is you wouldn't say like hey i want to go buy dota one online or whatever right you had to buy warcraft to get it to, right. to play that first That's until right. it became its own thing. Yeah, it is a little confusing because you would buy Warcraft and then you would go under custom game and then that game that so like by their definition it's a game using their assets with different yeah, rule like sets. The, the name that would show up on your Steam account or on Xbox what you are playing is Warcraft. It's going to be the larger game, right? So yeah, yeah, I think it's a mode. Yeah. We, I would not I would not say Portal is a mode of the orange box i guess because the orange box is not orange box is technically a collection so yeah. it's a collection of games yeah. maybe, so maybe it, it maybe portal does work if we're saying it's a collection of games so does that mean the orange box is not a game and i guess that's true the orange box is a collection yeah 
the only the only way to play orange box technically would be moving around the menu yeah before you go into a different yeah i don't know <laughs> Just... uh i asked because <laughs> i want to know if this total conversion mod i'm playing counts as a game for clearing yeah it counts I guess yeah. If it, if a total conversion, I still don't quite get it. It's a port, so yes, the port counts. Never heard this phrase before. Make sure I'm not Uber lantern. Mixed up. Uh, you got it wrong. You got to rip your Ethernet cord. A total conversion mod is literally basically a ROM hack. A total conversion mod is a mod of an existing game that replaces virtually all of the artistic assets in the original game and sometimes core aspects of gameplay. Total conversions can result in a completely different genre from the original. The Half-Life modding community splintered across the different total conversions available, offering modding for a particular total conversion rather than Half-Life in general. Examples of famous total conversions include Counter-Strike, Counter -Strike. Yeah. Defense okay, of the so Ancients, I think what was I think and what Gary's was mod. me is the different platform stuff. So if this all happened, yeah, on I, one I was platform. thinking more. Yeah, I was thinking more port. So, but yeah, no, these, they, yeah, those hundred percent count. Like, uh, if you're thinking stuff like Black Mesa, yeah, that counts. That counts, yeah. Daisy for Arma. So you would say that's a single game though, and not a mod for a game, like for a different single game. If it's if it's substantial enough, yeah, sure. Well, but based on the definition that we were doing for the other ones, you're still launching the original game and it's almost like a different mode, right? A lot of these have a a lot of these are a different thing you launch with a dependency on another game to use the engine. Yeah, so, like Counter-Strike is barely like Half-Life. It has some similar sound effects sure, and it's yeah, a first-person right, yeah. shooter. Yeah. So not enough of the original game is left that exists to consider it more like a, just a mod. Yeah. I would argue Dota is a bit of an opposite effect where it's very clearly still uh, Warcraft 3. It's just done in a completely different gameplay With style. a different, like, when it rule became set. Its own, yeah. Yeah. And then w when it became its own game, then all the characters changed, then yeah, that's its own game at that point. Yeah, true. It steps up from mode to actual full-blown game. Yeah, I yeah. think I think the line here is it, it's not total conversion versus port, it's total conversion versus like game mode and I think that's a blurry line. It is. Yeah. Now. Mm, can be. I think for the argument that Sukusuku is trying to do, I think it counts. Sure. Blue Lantern writes, in light of some of the ahem, childish backlash I've seen the Diamond and Pearl remakes get, what is the pettiest reason you didn't get a game? Oh, I have an answer to this that's recent. I just don't remember the name of the game. Hold on. Okay. Wilder Myth. Everything about it sounds great. I fucking hate how that game looks, and I'm not going to play it because of it. I can't stand that art style. What's it called? Wilder Myth. Everything about it sounds great. It's basically like... A uh, D and D, t a tactical RPG, like with that's kind of D and D, but like for solo play, the the computer kind of does the like DMing for it. I just can't stand how that game looks. I fucking hate the art style so much, so I'm okay. not gonna play it. Um, I think the only time where I said no, I'm just not gonna play this game was like Warrior Gold when I was like, I'm done with my 3ds. The I've the end with my 3ds. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, for me, usually it's like, oh, I don't have the time, and that's about it. So that's not a big deal. Although I can think of a time I like, I never played Diablo two because I tried to buy it uh, when I was on a trip once, and my mom knew that Diablo meant devil, so she never let me buy it, and that's why I've never played a Diablo game, yeah. <laughs> except for like five minutes at a land center. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> that is indeed a petty reason not to play a game. Yep. All right. Linebeck has a few here. Uh, how would you define what you feel as a bad video game in the simplest terms? Same as above, but for good. For good, uh, am I having fun? And yeah, for good is video. yeah, is fun is easily, and I feel like that's the opposite for like that works for bad too. Uh, uh, yeah. Bad bad game, you can say like, am I having fun, and is it my fault or the game's fault? 
sure. you know, I'm, I'm thinking because like there are definitely movies that are not like enjoyable to watch, but they're good movies. And yeah. It's just, you know what I mean? And the other way around, bad movies that are super enjoyable to sit through. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and I feel like the same should be able to be said about games or cause I don't because I don't want to say that games inherently have to be fun. I feel like right. that limits, you know, the the, the medium. OK. I mean, that's more of an artistic standpoint, I feel, more than anything else. Right, right, yeah. So I feel like so inherently you're to... you're playing a game because you want to have fun. Yes, but what I'm looking at is as interactive media, which is what video games are. Yeah. I don't think it needs to be fun. Yeah. For me, I think for me, a bad video game is if I think to myself, do does a game like is it wasting my time do i feel like my time is being wasted by this whether it's by the game's fault or just like me not feeling it and that's really a, a like personal internal conversation really <clears throat> sure but then there's stuff like like that's almost trying to waste your time like quap well, yeah, well, that's like, I guess it also depends on if it's intentional or not. That's the thing. So I th I almost think, like, do we need to, like, step back and it, and make it something as, as broad as, is it getting its message across coherently? You know, and its message being, like, its intent. Hmm. Yeah, I think intent's actually a good point. I think I see where you're going on this, Sean. I, I, I'm pretty sure I agree with you on this. Because I know a lot of the times, and we, and we could think of maybe even like Backbone, is is we felt that mm -hmm. when it does its twist, e each of us felt differently about it in terms of like, I don't think the game did well because it like, it like betrayed itself or it stopped doing what it was trying to do. It kind of jumped the shark, yada, yada. Some of us kind of sure. liked that twist. So, so I'm, just, I'm just using that as a recent example. Sure, sure. Um, and or I, or I think of like last stop recently is I didn't really enjoy that because I felt a lot of the character motivations fell flat, didn't make sense. And the stories just kind of fizzled out. So it, it, it did not kind of get its intention across that it was trying to do with that story. Mm hmm. I think there's just going to be a, an amount of subjectiveness to it, no matter what. Totally. Oh, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. But I think at the very least, if, if we def if we put down, is it getting its intent across coherently? I don't even think you could, because if a game is trying to be obtuse, that is now its message, right? Mm -hmm. In that case, it is getting its intent across the way it wants to. Mm-hmm. I used to have a stance of like, if people like, if the vast collective of people agreed that something was good or bad, then that is like the essential quantification of good or bad. And that's the logic behind game scores and stuff like that. Sure. But I've had pushback on that because it's still subjective at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. it is. And, and, you know, for every single time, there's going to be a very well-reviewed game. There's going to be a set of, set of people who don't like it and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, second Hopefully question. Uh, when was the last time you purchased a physical comic issue? Doesn't have to be DC or Marvel, not counting manga. Oh, well, okay. I was about to say, I just today bought a bunch of manga. And I know. <laughs> oh, what'd you buy? I got the, uh, that Legend of Zelda treasure chest collection was actually on sale. Oh, so like the, uh, I picked like up the encyclopedia ones. No, the actual, like the manga series for the games. Okay. So it's like think, four swords. I think you can get the, um, all the encyclopedias like come in like a little treasure chest, don't they? Yeah, that that they have that too. But like, there's a set with like five different hardcover manga for Legend of Zelda, and uh, it comes in like a little treasure chest. And I picked that up. I guess I, it showed up today, so I ordered it yesterday. Nice. But actual like a like a proper trade paperback? No, oh, God, it's been. It was university was when I was picking up. And even then I shift the manga. I think university was the last time I bought like single issues. 
my guy had a pull box and everything. Um, okay. but it just, but I've bought in some trades since then. And I think the most recent one is the, uh, mass effect collection. Uh, when they revamped the new 52 about 10 years ago, I bought one of each of the things to, wow. to check those out. And then I stuck with Batman's Court of Owls for a while until that nice. arc ended. And that was the last time I bought physical. It's been digital ever since. You still have those? Like all 52 of them? Uh, no. Well, I probably have some in this box here, but... I was going to say, because that, that's a fun little, like, collection saying I have all the number ones from the 52. Yeah. Some of them I thought I would get more into, but I just didn't. I don't know. That's definitely when I jumped onto D DC more. Yeah, I don't know, like, I've, I did Batman, I did Detective Comics, I did Superman, Action Comics, Flash. I think I did Green Lantern. A bunch of them I fell off of. I think I fell off of everything except for uh, the Flash and Batman. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, a weird time. I I like having everything either on my phone or my tablet. It's just so much easier. I'm definitely a, a comic book on my uh, tablet kind of guy. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I pretty much do everything digitally. And at this point, I just buy physical versions if I really liked something and I come across like a crazy sale. And it's like, yeah, I would like control on my shelf for $9, please. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, they did... When did the Scott Pilgrim colored versions come out because i bought uh 20 while ago okay yeah, that, 13, 14. that would have been more recent then so what and yeah. whatever that was probably i guess if we're not counting that as manga then yeah i guess for me it's scott pilgrim as well oh yeah true it's probably more manga. It's, yeah it kind of straddles the line a little bit i guess i guess because you're not reading right to left it doesn't count <clears throat> i don't know sure uh, final question from Lineback. Lately, I've seen more and more people not buying ports of games on the Switch, even when the Switch has timed exclusivity due to the relatively poor performance by comparison, as well as a pandemic making portable gaming not as prevalent. With this in mind, what should Nintendo do to convince people to stick with them for third-party ports? Also keeping in mind chips shortages caused by the p pandemic and cryptocurrency mining. I don't think there really is a way. <clears throat> Yeah, no. They can't convince like, me. As, as, especially with the, the Steam Deck coming out next year or this year, whenever it is. Like I think the Steam Deck is definitely going yeah. to eat Nintendo's lunch when that thing drops with a lot of the indie stuff. Especially when you're looking at like when it, when the Switch version comes out, it's like a full priced thing. Yeah. At the same time, it's five dollars on Steam. Sure. I mean, most people won't have the option of one or the other. Or the fact Probably. that, like, a Humble Bundle will give you 10 games that you could play on your Steam Deck for the price of yeah. one of those games on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is like the... This happens every generation. Third yeah. parties are strong on the on Nintendo at the beginning. Yeah. And they, then they taper off because they get tired of having to put these, like, subpar versions yeah. that are selling poorly um, on there. And I, I, the Switch, I feel like, had a bit of a longer run just because it yeah. was so popular, and it still and is. And the portability. Still popular. I feel like um, the the pandemic has kind of definitely damaged like Nintendo's stance because of the portability lack. You know, we say that, but then like Animal Crossing was a month into the pandemic, and that thing sold like a bazillion copies. Yeah, because everyone was locked in their house. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, like Nintendo still did sell yeah. well. well. And also, that has Nintendo tax, and it's also a well-established series. So I feel like that's an, a bit of an outlier. Sure. But, like, um, yeah, like, the the portable the portability argument lost a lot of, like, yeah. luster when no one was doing regular traveling. And then to get third parties back, I think they have to release that Switch Pro yeah. so that these games run better. Because, and like, I know personally... I don't want to if it's on multiple platforms, I'm never picking the switch first because it's just it's going to run inferior. Yeah, they have to eat the Nintendo tax, too. There's many times where I was like, oh, that might be kind of cute to have on the switch. It's fifteen dollars more than on Steam. Fuck that. Like, yep, I'm not doing that. Yep. At this point, it's kind of come down to like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to play it on like my primary thing. And then, hey, maybe if it's on like a cool sale. I'll get it on the Switch so I have that portably. Yeah. 
and even that window is getting smaller and smaller as like game pass is on the cloud now yeah I'm, I'm gonna have a steam deck at the end of the year like my switch is as every generation goes going to be the first party nintendo thing and that's it sure yeah the the main reason i use the switch still is that i like being able to just go upstairs and just play a game out of the office or yeah. play it anywhere else in the house but like if the steam deck ends up actually being good it, it's probably going to kick that out sure that habit's gonna get pushed aside yeah and i know like the steam deck is like a lot more expensive but when you like start thinking long term you're going to be saving a ton on software All right, yeah. uh, John, I think you're next. Uh, Rinku588 says, what's a game that was already outdated when it came out? Duke Nukem Forever. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, good answer. Yeah. I was going to say Deadly Premonition 2. Oh, well, yeah. Deadly Premonition 1, technically, as well. <laughs> and 1. Yeah, either one. I, I guess technically, but I feel, but it was able to, like, stand on, like, some other pillars of enjoyment. Two is just like this is so buggy and running terribly and bad game design. Yeah, both great answers. I don't. Ha I didn't have any on the top of my head. Uh, the Phantom Aegis writes, "What's your favorite game you've gotten on your birthday?" Ooh, that's hard. This is hard. It's been a that long a time since I got a game on my birthday. That, it my was problem was I got Christmas. a lot of games on birthdays, and they were all really good games. Mine was always Christmas. That's when we got game stuff. I, I, I definitely got more games at Christmas than my birthday, because birthday was like I got like one gift, and then but Christmas yeah. it was like there was a bunch of gifts and yada yada. Um, I got my Super Nintendo on my birthday, so I'm probably gonna say Mario World because of that. That's a great one. Yeah. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I got my N64 on my birthday, so it's probably Ocarina of Time for me. I'm trying to think what else. I know I got new Super Mario Bros. on the DS on my birthday. I got Maximum Carnage for the SNES on my birthday. Oh, damn. <laughs> nice. I got, I got a, a Super Scope on my birthday one year. <laughs> I got a PlayStation 2 on my birthday. I don't know if I got any games with it, though. I think it came with Gran Turismo like two, and I mm. hate that game. Oh, ooh! Like Christmas, I can remember like I got like Chrono Trigger on the DS. That was awesome. I got some. I got tons of Fire Emblem games on uh, Christmas. So Christmas is like the game. Is game time? Yeah, Christmas is when we got our NES and like Mega Man games and. Every, like all of the stuff growing up is when we did that. Christmas was when I got a TV for my own room so I could actually play the games in my room nice. instead of taking over the living room TV. Yeah. I had that on a birthday. I remember I came downstairs one morning and just on like the landing of the stairs, there was just a big TV box. And, it, and I was just like, what the hell is this? And then I went and watched cartoons. My mom came down and she's like, you didn't open your gift. I was like, I, I didn't expect that, that TV was mine. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm, I'm 13. <laughs> and she got me, not only did she get me a, a TV, she got me, she got cable put in my room. Oh, wow. So I, so I could watch uh, you know, TV and stuff up there as well. Nice. That was pretty great. And then you never left your room. Basically, and then I got a second TV for my room so I could play games and watch TV at the same time. Ah. That's, that's how you do it. <laughs> All right, Rasterman. What's the most misleading video game title you can think of? Final Fantasy. Easy. Yeah, New actually. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Damn it. Maybe, maybe, it maybe it's not misleading because it's the last one we'll ever get forever. No, he came out in another game. Remember when they did that uh, Bulletstorm. Bulletstorm DLC? Yeah, yeah Duke yeah, Nukem's yeah. World Tour, whatever the fuck they called it. Or Duke Nukem Edition or whatever it was. Oh, my God. Um, hmm. Resident Evil, when only, like, the first one takes place in a house. 
No, but it they're talking about the virus inside your body is the Resident Evil, not like literally oh. a residence. Yeah, God, oh, John. Huh? I'm sorry, you can look at it from that aspect too. Totally. Considering the first one's based around a house. Totally. The only reason I like know that is because The Evil Within came out and it blew yeah. my mind that it's the same title. <laughs> Are you telling me that we're The Walking Dead? I lost my fucking mind, dude, when I was like, oh my god, it's the same thing. <laughs> so, this is, this is a is Phoenix hilarious. Down moment, right? What's that? So this is a Phoenix Down moment when everyone realized the feathery, the tufts feathers, of feathers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I think just by sheer volume and numbers, Final Fantasy has to just take it, right? It's such a stupid Probably, title yeah. when you say something like Final Fantasy 16 is coming out. They've gone so long, though, they can't change it. It'd be so right. weird no, if they, they changed should. it. They totally. Yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, what's going to be great is when humanity, like, dies, and the last <laughs> game that is put out is a Final <laughs> Fantasy game, and it's a remake of the first one. Every time a Final Fantasy game comes out, it's actually part of Nostradamus's predictions. Yeah. <laughs> if you line up the first letter of every Final Fantasy title, it spells F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F Uh, and we're ending with this question from Aelita, who says, since we now have New Donk City and Mario Golf, what's another level in the Mario series you would like to see get added in the game as future DLC? Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, good answer. So it doesn't have to be in the, Mo in the Mario series? If we're talking core Mario, then sure, but like our DK's playable in it. Diddy okay. Kong was in like tennis and it will probably get added as a DLC character to this game. Uh, I'm going to pick block fort from Mario Kart. All right. All right. It's Mario Kart in general. I want a Mario track golf course, please. There's so many good Mario Kart tracks that you could make like a cool course on. Like even like Rainbow Road would be awesome. Oh, Rainbow Road set would be amazing. Mm. Or even like I'm, I'm just trying to think like uh, like baby circuit would be silly and fun. Park, oh my god. Baby Park or whatever it's called, yeah. Um there, yeah, there's a ton of good cor uh I, I mean it's they're great uh like cart courses, and so they would just be fun to just play golf on them for sure. Or just make a new Mario Kart. How about that? I would like that more. They I would did. give it's Nintendo Mario listen Kart to me. Tour. I will give you sixty dollars for a new Mario Kart. They did, it's called Mario Kart Tour. You can download it on your phone today. And then they made another one after that. It's called Mario Kart Home Circuit. You can drive around oh, your house. that's right. God, I forgot about that. Yeah, I know. Yep. That was just last year, wasn't it? <laughs> it's pretty recent, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, that's going to do it for questions. On that bummer of a note. <laughs> um, if you'd like to send a question in, it's topdownrespective at gmail.com, at TDP Podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. What is your game of the week? I guess Axe and Verge 2. Uh, Final Fantasy 14. And I'll give mine to Splitgate. Some things you should look out for. Our Backbone episode is up. It went up last week, so definitely go check that out if you like raccoons or video <laughs> games. Mm -hmm. Video games that are a single video game, you can check out Backbone. Um, the poll is now live for the September game. So go vote on what we will play through next month. And next week, we will be doing our TDP Plus episode of Antichamber. Um, so get excited for that. Oh, oh, it is the last of the month. Damn it. I thought there was two more Thursdays. Oops. Um, before I end this, John, is there any other corrections you need to tell us? I do have to correct one thing. I have to correct the fact that I said this was a fail button and it made a wah wah noise when, in fact, it is a trombone sadness noise so sad i do have to apologize for that sad trombone is a well-known sound effect that i feel we should all be well aware of and i'm sorry i made that mistake i mean in the words of cookie masterson six trombones is not a parade <laughs> i don't what you don't know jack was that from um one of one of uh, one of the party ones that had 
a you don't know jack in it so it was like five or six i think anyway okay bye